Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for September 28th, 2023. Well, by now I'm sure most of you have heard about the disgraceful event which occurred in front of the Canadian Parliament on September 22nd. The Speaker of the Parliament, Anthony Rota, introduced a man as a, quote, Canadian hero who, quote, fought for Ukraine independence against the Russians, unquote, during World War II. There were two standing ovations for the 98-year-old, prolonged ovations, punctuated by a fist salute, a clenched fist salute from Ukraine's President Zelensky, who was standing next to Canada's Prime Minister, the morally challenged Justin Trudeau. It was later revealed that this Canadian and Ukrainian hero was a volunteer member of the 14th Waffen Division of the SS, that is the Nazi army, volunteer army. He joined as a volunteer of the Galician SS, which was directly involved in atrocities during World War II, which have been fully verified and documented, including the massacre of hundreds of ethnic Poles in Ukraine who were burned to death. There was an outcry that followed this. The question came up, how did this happen? Who made the mistake? Well, the speaker, Rota, has since resigned, expressing regret. While Trudeau blamed Rota and used the incident to call for a, quote, pushback against Russian propaganda, Russian disinformation, and a need to maintain, quote, steadfast, unequivocal support for Ukraine. How is this Russian disinformation? This was a, a, a true statement about who this man was. So how does Trudeau get off calling this Russian disinformation? Well, to cover for what should have been a deeply embarrassing incident, the Canadian media has rallied behind Trudeau and others uh, to say that it's a, it's a sad story, but they're lamenting that this will be used to justify Putin's claim that the special military operation was aimed at ridding Ukraine and the Ukrainian military of its Nazi element. Well, there are two obvious points here. In World War II, Russia was an ally of Canada and the United States against Nazi Germany. So someone fighting against Russia in Ukraine was fighting on the side of the Nazis. Now, did no one in the Canadian parliament understand that? Did they not hear that? Are they so blinded by Russophobia, as Helga Zepp-Larouche commented, that they would ignore that? But then there's a second question that was posed by a Canadian journalist, Aaron Maté of the gray zone. He ridiculed the excuses coming from Trudeau and the pro-proxy war officials in Canada uh, and asked the question, quote, why is applauding Ukrainian Nazis a scandal, but not arming them, unquote. In other words, it's scandalous to cheer them, but it's okay to give them arms to fight the proxy war against Russia. Now, I'll be linking his article at the bottom of the description page, <clears throat> but this raises a question. Here we have an incident of what should have been covered under the Nuremberg Code of someone who knew or should have known that he was involved in a genocidal operation. But instead, he was greeted like a Nuremberg rally of the Nazi party with cheers and, and applause and stamping feet, uh, the disgusting spectacle of Christia Freeland, the deputy prime minister of Canada, beaming as though she had just seen her savior come into the room. Now, we've been emphasizing since the February, <clears throat> since the February 2014 US sponsored coup in Ukraine, the regime change coup, uh, of the role of the Nazis in the coup, and also the role of the Nazis in driving the murderous attacks on Ukrainian citizens of Ru Russian ethnicity in the Donbass region who opposed the coup. These were members of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, 
part of what was a brigade of fascists honoring the memory of Stefan Bandera, who was the leader, one of the leaders of the SS units that supported Hitler in World War II. Now, until 2018, 2019, there were many articles in the Western press about the highly visible network of Nazis in the Ukrainian government, in the Poroshenko regime, in the defense and security forces under Zelensky. This was covered in media. Reuters and others had, had articles on this. But then once the United States and its stooges in NATO decided to shift to a, quote, great power confrontation, unquote, against Russia, which was announced in a Rand Corporation document in, in uh, 2019, <clears throat> references to the Nazis in the Azov Battalion not only disappeared, but anyone who referred to them was denounced as pushing Putin talking points. Uh, and those referring to this, such as Helga Zeplerush and myself, were identified by Nazi networks inside Ukraine's security department as, quote, information terrorists, unquote. Well, how inconvenient is it for them that this alleged mistake of honoring a Nazi in the Canadian parliament just occurred? Uh, this was commented on by Russian President Medvedev, who's now the deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council. Medvedev said, quote, NATO has evolved into an openly fascist alliance resembling Hitler's axis, albeit on a larger scale, unquote. Now, there are those who will protest that this was an honest mistake and that should be taken with a large grain of salt. But is it possible that everyone who engaged in the full-throated cheering of this Nazi veteran who was identified as having fought against Russia in World War II, is it possible that every single person in that parliamentary building is ignorant of history? And if so, what a disgrace, what a shame. As for Trudeau, ignorance is no excuse, nor can it be an excuse for any member of the U.S. Congress who continues to vote for billions of dollars to fund NATO's proxy war against Russia, putting arms into the hands of admitted and avowed Nazis. So the lesson of this is that the reports of the, 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 the Russian special military operation was unprovoked. Uh, those reports can now be seen as a fraud to justify a war to destroy Russia. Now, some of you have protested recently to the discussion of there being Nazis in Ukraine. I'm not saying all Ukrainians are Nazis. This is a very small grouping, maybe 2%. 3%. But in Maidan and after, this was an extremely important grouping inside the policymaking uh, channels of the Ukrainian government. Zelensky, who was elected as a peace candidate, who was going to carry through the Minsk Accord, which would have ended the shelling and killing in Donbass, was threatened by the neo Nazis that they would, he would be hanging in a square in Kiev if he followed through with his commitment to fulfill the Minsk Accords. So it should be known to everyone that this is not Russian propaganda, but a, a, a truth, a fact of history. But the event in Canada showed that either the ignorance driven by Russophobia, which makes people blind to reality, or just the commitment to take money from the war machine to continue to carry out a war against Russia, that this is a threat to all of us. For, for more on the background of this, I'm going to be linking, besides the Mate article, linking the dialogue I did with Helga Zeplerush yesterday, where she discussed this and the implications of the peace proposal coming out of Germany in great detail. Now, since tomorrow's Friday, I'll be taking your questions and comments. If you have some thoughts on this, if you have some questions about it or comments on it, please send them to me. 
at harleysch at gmail.com. I'd like to know what you're thinking. And I, I know many of you in Canada have already expressed to me your horror that this was your government on display. So let me hear from you and I'll see you again tomorrow. Hello, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Support our independence to produce videos like these. Become a member of the LaRouche organization at thelarouche.org slash member. By becoming a member for $25 or more, you'll get special access to the EIR Alert Daily Briefing and Weekly Magazine, which is what I read to stay on top of things.